Here we're going to look at significant figures. Now significant figures this is something that's going to help us out a lot in, in chemistry throughout the rest of the, the year because it's going to allow us to understand what we should round to whenever we're doing different math equations and different chemical equations. Um, and it also allows us to know if something is an exact measurement or kind of a rounded number. So why do we use significant figures? By counting the significant figures in a problem, it allows us to know the exact how exact the measurement is and to what decimal point we should round. There's always those questions of, what should I round to in this problem? What should I round to in this problem? And that's what significant figures are going to help us with. Um, so how do we count significant figures? So that's the first thing. we got to figure out what significant figures are. Um, significant figures, counting them, varies by number, largely depending on if the number has a decimal or does not have a decimal. Uh, we'll explore the different methods for counting significant figures, and then we're going to use these throughout the rest of the semester. So if we're going to start off counting significant figures with a decimal, so any number, you can see all these numbers down here, all these examples, they all have a decimal. So these are the rules for counting significant figures in numbers with a decimal. So when looking at any number with a decimal, it is considered a measured value. What that means is it's an exact number, like it's an exact measurement, as I say right here, it's an exact measurement. Um, all numbers in a decimal, all numbers in a value with a decimal are significant except for leading zeros. So what is a leading zero? A leading zero is any zero that comes before an actual integer, that comes before an actual number. So these right here would be leading zeros, and these right here would be leading zeros. So every number with the exception of the leading zeros is significant. So we'll look at this first one. We'll do a few, we'll do five examples here. The first one, counting the significant figures here. There's no zeros in here, there's no leading zeros, so all we do is simply count the numbers. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So this first number would ha have six significant figures. Pretty straightforward, right? Not too bad. Second number, still no zeros, and it's also got a decimal. So we count every single number. One, two, three, four, five. 1.23334 would have five significant figures. Okay, this one right here, this is where we're getting to some leading zeros. So all numbers in a decimal are significant except leading zeros. So that means anytime you see zeros at the beginning of a number, you do not count them. These are not significant numbers. You do not count the leading zeros. So this number, point zero point zero zero nine two eight, will have one, two, three significant figures because we do not count the leading zeros if the number has a decimal. Okay, here we see this number has some zeros, but are they leading? Are they at the beginning of the number? No, they are not. What that means is they are significant. The only thing we don't count are these leading zeros. So in 1.0049, we will have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 significant figures. Five significant figures in 1.0049 because we have these zeros sandwiched here in the middle, but as long as they aren't leading the way, we still count them as significant. Okay, and our last one, 0 0.00400. So we have a lot of zeros in this one. We do not count the leading zeros. Any zeros that come at the beginning, nope, cross them out. Whoosh, whoosh. <laughs> Whoops. We do not count those. At the end, however, once we hit a number, everything else is significant. So this number would have one, two, three significant figures. So the only thing we're not counting in numbers with a decimal are those leading zeros. So that is significant figures in numbers with a decimal. So that's our first set of rules. Our second set of rules come in counting significant figures in numbers without a decimal. You can see all these examples down here. None of these have a decimal. So that changes our rules just a little bit. Uh, when looking at a number without a decimal, it's referred to as a rounded or inexact value. These are typically not exact measurements. So if it doesn't have a decimal, it's not an exact measurement, typically. Um, all numbers in a rounded value or a value without a decimal are significant with the lone exception being trailing zeros. 
So this one is a slightly different rule. In this situation, we do not care about trailing zero. What does a trailing zero mean? It means any zero that comes at the end of the number. So we look here, these three would be trailing zeros. This one right here would be a trailing zero. These nine would all be trailing zeros, and that is all the trailing zeros I see here. So it has to be zeros that come at the very end of the number. There can't be another number above zero that comes after them, or else it makes all of them significant. So the only thing we are not counting here are trailing zeros or zeros that make up the end of a number. So let's do some practice counting these. So in a number with no zeros, you just count all of them. One, two, three, four. So 56, 78 would have four significant figures. 8,000. We do not count the trailing zeros, so we would cross off all three of these. So 8,000 would only have one significant figure. 406. Are any of these zeros trailing? No, they are not. There is a zero, but it's in the middle, so we still count it. So 406 would have three significant figures. 3,070. This zero, this zero is significant because it's in between two other numbers. This zero that I've underlined in blue, however, because it is at the end of the number, is not significant. So we just count one, two, three. So 3070 would have three significant figures. This is four billion. It's a big number, right? It still only has one significant figure because these nine zeros are all trailing. They're all coming at the end, so we only count the four. And then we have five million and one. This one at the end, what that does is it makes all these zeros in the middle significant. We only do not count zeros that are at the end of the number. So if there's another regular number at the end, another number above zero, we have to count all of them. So this would have seven significant figures. So those are our rules for numbers without a decimal. We just don't count the trailing zeros. So what I'm going to do now, what we're going to do now, is you have a series of practice problems. There are 20 practice problems here. What you need to do is pause the video and go through each of these 20 practice problems. After you've finished, come back and check your work and then correct any mistakes once you see why you made those mistakes. So pause it right now because I'm going to start going through them. So pause it and then you'll come back and check your answers. Okay, first let's identify if we have a decimal. We do have a decimal. There's no zeros, so this will have one, two, three, three significant figures. Okay, this number has a decimal, right? So that means we do not count the leading zeros. So that means this one you should have put that it has two significant figures. Okay, this number, no trailing zeros, no leading zeros. This one has four. 6.00. Now one thing you should have noticed with this, we do have trailing zeros, right? But there is a decimal in the number. Because there's a decimal, you have to count all of them. So that one has three significant figures. That one may have tripped you up. Okay, 27 has two significant figures. 5 million, there is no decimal. So that means we don't count any of those trailing zeros. So 5 million just has one significant figure. 0 0.1110. What's the rule for decimals again? Oh yeah, we don't count the leading zeros. So we wouldn't count either of those two. So it will have four sig figs because we still count the trailing zero because it has a decimal. Okay, another one with a decimal it has one, two, three, four, five sig figs because the only thing we don't count with a decimal is the leading zero. And another decimal. We don't count the leading zeros. You can just automatically cross the leading zeros off when you see it doesn't have or when you see it has a decimal. So this one has one, two, three, four, five, six sig figs. No decimal here, but there's no trailing zeros. So this one will have four sig figs. So check those ten, see if you got those ten right. We'll go on to these ten right here. I'll switch colors, you know, just for fun. We have a decimal, so we can cross off the leading zeros. This one will have three sig figs. A decimal again, so we count all of it because there's no leading zero. So this one will have five. Okay, no decimal here, and we have a trailing zero. So cross off the trailing zero because we don't count the trailing zero if it doesn't have a decimal. So this one would have four. 
Another one with no decimal, cross off the trailing zeros. This one will have one. This one has a decimal and it has no. All right, this one has a decimal, so you go one, two, three. This one has a decimal, so you count all of them, two. No decimal, but also no zeros, so this one will have a five. Okay, right here, it has a decimal, it's a long number. All we do is cross off the leading zeros, count the rest, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Don't let it slip you up when there's a ton of zeros. When there's a decimal, you only don't count the leading zeros. All right, another decimal, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven would have one. So check your work. If you missed any, go back and correct them and try to see why you may have missed them. If you didn't count the leading zeros or you did count the leading zeros, something like that. Uh, but go back and check your work. But that is significant figures, basic introduction. And yeah, there we go. Good luck and farewell.